so let's open uh, uh, Lumerical Multiphysics. So this is a solar example for Lumerical Multiphysics. So as you see here, uh, so we first we start with Lumerical Heat. What we need, um, uh, we need to add uh, some material. We need to add some geometry, like numerical FDTD, um, solver type, and, and the region that we want to simulate. So, for the material, uh, so let's start with geometry. So let me, I disable all of these items. So now we don't have any uh, material here. So we start with base. In the base side, if you remember, our base is aluminum, like lumerical FPTB. So the, the geometry is uh, uh, 14 micrometer. So I put it 14. Uh, but uh, but in the in the in the simulation region side, we will I will describe the exact number that we want to simulate. So for the Y span is I put one micrometer for one. I select aluminum CRC. So okay, but uh, but how we define aluminum? and how we use aluminum. Do you see here when I put, when I click on the, the base, you see here, this is aluminum highlighted. So if I click on the aluminum, you can see that two parts for aluminum. This is a con electric part and this is a heat part. And how we can add material to the, to the material side, you can go to the electrical and thermal part and you can select aluminum here. You know, aluminum, you can click on create. And also you can change the color if you want to change the color of aluminum here, please. And if you go to the aluminum, you see electronic property. It's a work function is 4.28 electron volt and a thermal property. In a thermal property, you see that the heat transport property and specific heat. And if you click on this equation, you see that uh, the, the formula that, that shows how it depends to the heat. And, um, yeah, so cancel. So now we know how we add material to the uh, to the lumerical multiphysics. Click on like enable. So our silicon is the material is silicon, silicon ideal. Uh, the geometry the y span is three micrometer. What, what uh, regarding to the silicon ideal, because uh, uh, we have other kind of silicon that I will discuss later that uh, I include some bulk and bulk surface effects to the, to the device. So for this reason, I want to ignore those kind of effects and I want to concentrate to just silicon ideal. So next uh, we add anti-reflection coating. So our anti-reflection coating is uh, the material is 70 nanometer like lumerical FDTD. The material is silicon nitride. So, so please look at the mesh order. So the mesh order of 
silicon nitride is three. Higher than, you know, if you look at the mesh order of silicon, it's two. It means that if there is overlap between silicon nitride and silicon, so silicon is the simulation, the solver considers the silicon as a material. Oh, so now we add the um, emitter. So you see here, our emitter is uh, is uh, the material of our emitter is silver, and uh, the geometry is 0.5 micrometer uh, width or two micrometer. Uh, as an X span. So, and also you see here, this is a silicon dioxide, SiO2, but, and the mesh order is five. So if in this region, you see this is a SiO2, this is silver, and this is uh, uh, is uh, anti-reflection coating. So for instance, in this region, as you see here, three material, we have three material, anti-reflection coating in this case, SiO2, and silver. So the simulation, the solver consider first as a material, it consider a silic, uh, uh, silver as a simulation material, because if you look at the silver, you see here the, the mesh order is two, but for SiO2, the mesh order is five. For this reason, the simulation consider silver as a top priority material in this case. Uh, so regarding to our geometry, if you look at this slide, you see that our region, we will consider the simulation region as this green rectangular. So we have nine micrometer lengths as, uh, as, uh, active region. I mean, silicon. If you remember in, in the FDDT also, we consider 18 period for the for the silicon and each period, the width of each period was uh, uh, 0.5 micrometer. So it's nine micrometer and for the emitter side is, uh, we consider one micrometer. So the overall length is 10 micrometer. So G, this is repeated as a periodic structure. Uh, if I, Go back to the simulation region. So now our material uh, is clear. So we have base, we have silicon, we have anti-reflection coating, and this is our emitter, and this is our SiO2. So the material of each, each case also changes when I Click for instance, silicon is silicon. Emitter you see here is silver, front end is a SiO2. Our base is aluminum, and our anti reflection coating is Si, so it's silicon nitride. So now we know the material and wavelength. In next step, we need a simulation region that I described in the PowerPoint. So our simulation region, we just simulated 2D, Z-normal simulation. So 
this is x y so this is a 2d z homomorphism and uh, and the, the surrounding part the environment is closed i mean there is no interaction with my environment so it means close x min boundary x max boundary y min boundary y min it's closed and uh, and the background material if the background material is air if we, if, for instance, in our simulation region, we didn't define uh, the, or the simulation to not uh, detect any material, so it will consider a background real as air. So, and also the geometry start from zero to 10 micrometer, I described Y10. And uh, for the Y region is 3.8. Uh, it, 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 should, it, it should be noted that your uh, simulation uh, region must consider uh, a metal. You see here, this is a metal. I mean, silver. And uh, here is SiO2. And here is uh, um, silicon. And this is aluminum. You know? I mean, this simulation region consider uh, all of the geometry and material that we have in our simulation part. So for the heat side, um, in the simulation region, we select heat simulation region that we defined before. So our solvate type is steady state. So just now we want to do thermal simulation. And uh, because our simulation is 2D, so this is for the dimensional other, for instance, for the Z side. And uh, there also, uh, mesh constraint is very important. So here is uh, 50 nanometer, it's good. So, and um, there is nothing that we need, just also, uh, we want to do some thermal simulation, so, and we need to T temperature. It's okay. So, um, now we add uh, uh, heat source from here, import heat. Here you see here. And uh, we can add data from here, rows and we select a Q planner math. So before I do the simulation, I go to the, uh, so let me delete this one. Let me uh, also delete uh, this one. And, um, if I go to the heat source, you see here, in the data side, I already added this file, QPlanner, that uh, I've done with uh, Lumerical uh, FDTD. So you see here, I can load it. No. Now, you see the Absorption thermal, let's bring it from uh, numerical FDDT. So the geometry of this also heat source is around nine micrometer and three micrometer for, uh, for the Y axis. So I also, regarding to the boundary condition, you can add boundary condition from uh, convection because we have some convection behavior here. So uh, we added two convection. So the first one is uh, we put at the top of the device, the temperature of top of the device as a 300. 
Kelvin, and uh, the, our surface start our simulation region. We we put uh, this boundary condition on the top of the surface, you know, and the bottom because uh, we have uh, aluminum, so there is no convection. And the other side, uh, we have other geometry, the same parameter, and the geometry is, uh, we, we will, will select surface top as material material, and uh, our material one is air and SiO2, because uh, we have some convection from SiO2 with air. So I mean, uh, just, um, um, our device. We put two boundary condition at the top of the device. So as showed in this picture, for the monitor case, we add some monitor as a two DZ normal, and uh, you know I want to save the output of our temperature as a TMAP solar planner that mat. So for this geometry, the same geometry that I described regarding to the geometry. So I put Y and now we can see a different region, for instance, the so this is uh, the region, this is domain two is for silver, domain three is for SiO2, you see here. Yeah. Domain four is for SISN, uh, silicon nitride, domain five for silicon, and this is domain one, domain one for aluminum. So you see a different domain. So you can make sure that uh, a different structure, uh, different material uh, in your region, especially in this case, if you remember uh, some material here, uh, we, we see some overlap between different material and I see that the, the silver is dominated. And uh, this is because of the, mesh order that we defined in the material part. I will show again, look here, this is emitter. In the material side, this mesh order will determine which of the material will be dominant. Now, everything is ready to run the heat simulation. So in the heat simulation, uh, we can run select one and uh, so after we run the simulation we can go to the folder you can see that so this math file as it added recently so if you look at my time file generated in this case so we will use this file in the numerical uh, electric port now also we can see regarding to the temperature. So if we open the temperature, if you click on edit button here. Also remove the other part, just we keep temperature. You see that uh, you see around 30 degree uh, increase in, in temperature in this, in this region. So yeah, that's it. And we can go and do the simulation for, for glomerical charge. So let me, 